Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Sir Alex Ferguson Challenge with Sheffield United. In today's episode we're going to play through the entirety of January, see if we can improve our squad and play about 7 games. There has only been one fixture that you've missed since the last time we met, that was a 1-1 weird draw against Everton. It was a little bit of a disappointing result, Everton are not doing very well in the league and we did take the lead through Oliver McBurney in the 24th minute but we couldn't hold on, Andre Gomez equalised in the 60th minute and as you can see Everton were down in 17th position at the time of playing. Uh, so after that point we're now still sitting in 7th, we are 5 points behind West Ham in 6th but 3 points ahead of Wolves in 8th. So a couple of bits and bobs to run through before January officially kicks off. Pellegrini, our starting left wing back, is going to be missing for three months. He's torn his hamstring and he is going to be unavailable for a very long time, which is hugely, hugely disappointing. We're going to have to be relying on Ender Stevens quite a lot to see us through a difficult period. I'm not in the hunt for a left wing back at all, not even on loan, really, to be honest. I think we've got enough depth of cover to be able to see us through anywhere. Um, Monaco are interested in Tilo Kera. He was transfer listed for maybe the first three months of the season until he asked to be withdrawn from the transfer list. Uh, the media are reporting £13 million as a potential fee. That's not enough for me to let him go. He's currently worth 12 and a half. He's a first choice, really, really talented centre half. He's on for pretty high wages, so it wouldn't be the end of the world if we did have to sell him, but you're talking 25, 30 million if I am to even consider it. Uh, but that's it. The board did offer me to change my season expectations. I kept them where they were. They weren't really changing anything in terms of the transfer budget or wage budget for increasing my deal. So yeah, we've got £40 million to spend. Plenty in the wages as well. So we can make moves if needed. Central midfielder I'm going to be looking for throughout the entirety of January to see if, see if we can get anyone that's really, really quality. And I would like them to come in and slot straight in. I would also wouldn't mind trying to find potentially another striker maybe just to be able to offer some competition Oliver McBurney and uh, Esposito neither of which have had a good season so far our goals are not really coming from our strikers but if nothing happens I'll see you at the first game of which will be Dover in the FA Cup third round uh, we'll look to play a slightly rotated side not too rotated though because our board does expect us to reach the fifth round so to get knocked out by Dover would be absolutely devastating. And then we've also got six Premier League games. Bournemouth, Brentford, Norwich, Chelsea, Southampton and Watford. So, uh, got a lot to get through. We've just finished our game against Dover and scraped through 1-0. <laughs> a little bit embarrassing. We did dominate the game and we probably should have scored more goals. But we didn't. And it left it a little bit nervy. But we're through at the fourth round. So, we'll take it. So draws in the league seem to be on the menu for us right now. We've just played Bournemouth away from home and drew 1-1. One, one. George Baldock put us in front inside two minutes. They equalised shortly after half-time and they also missed a penalty during the first half. So a point was probably a fair result, but uh, I wouldn't mind picking up three points every now and then. So we've just played Norwich and the comeback of the season has just happened. We were 2-0 down against Norwich after 30 minutes. Bonatini put them in front inside 19 minutes then a penalty on the 30th but then we definitely turned it on Jean-Pierre and Oliver McBurney in stoppage time of the first half getting the two goals to bring us level before half time and then after the second half Esposito and McBurney once again getting the goals to give us a 4-2 victory it definitely did not look good going into 45 minutes it really didn't and after that game, we are still in 7th position in the Premier League. Joint 9 points with Wolves in 8th, but they have played a game more than we have. Still 5 points behind West Ham as well. We seem to have established ourselves as sort of top half fodder. You know, probably not European uh, qualification contenders this season. But definitely giving everybody a game in and around us. The transfer window, it isn't going particularly well. I'll not lie to you, we've had... Well, I'll show you the amount of offers we've had rejected. I've, I've tried to upset a few players purely because due to the fees that they were actually wanting by their clubs, it wouldn't be a necessarily good bit of business for us. Ronaldo Camara's one. He, nobody was in. He, Benfica didn't even entertain an offer for him. I've got a scout report coming in eventually. Johnny Lucas, he's another one. Another one the scout report's going to come in. 20 years old, looks absolutely fantastically well-rounded. 
10 million pound offer rejected out of hand Vito Ferreira Bear from Porto another one 20 years old really young rejected out of hand <laughs> Marcus Antonio I really wanted this guy classed as a wonder kid plays a Chakta uh, central midfielder and defensive midfielder again they wanted 57 million pounds from it wasn't something I was really going to close to entertain them ideally I wouldn't mind spending about 20 to 30 million on that sort of player Danny Olmo we actually agreed a fee for for Dynamo uh, 35 million pound they want he wanted 150 grand per week that pretty much ruled us out uh, PSG were interested as well so I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up going to them so we've made numerous offers particularly for central midfielders but um, I don't know if we're going to be able to sign anyone this window the sort of fees that clubs are asking for are just a little bit too expensive for my tastes so very close so close we've just played Chelsea away from home we ended up going 1-0 up through Oliver McBurney um, they ended up equalising and then Ender Stevens decided to get himself sent off in the second half so we've been down 10 men for the last 30 minutes they of course take the lead after that point Luke Freeman equalises in the 77th minute and I thought we were going to pinch a point with 10 men away from home against Chelsea but then Mason Mount in the 91st minute dashes our dreams unfortunate but ah, so disappointing could have had a point there that defeat sees us drop to eighth position Wolves obviously winning their game we're, we're sort of being dragged down in the mid table mix which is fine on 33 points after 22 games is absolutely fantastic we're 15 points clear from Newcastle and 18th so relegation is pretty much off the table at this point we'll get another six or seven points and we'll hit the 40 point mark um, which will obviously be great in terms of the fixtures we've still got remaining in January we've got Huddersfield in the fourth round of the FA Cup we win that then we meet the board expectations to get the fifth round which is absolutely fantastic so I will be playing a full strength side there and then we've got Southampton and Watford to complete our fixtures I'm on the hunt for a striker now I've give up with central midfielders I'm on the hunt for a striker so I'll update you if there's anything finally we have some movement we've had an offer accepted for Alexander Isaac uh, the Swedish striker is currently playing for Real Sociedad he's a three and a half star five star player according to my scouts they've actually accepted a 12 and a half million pound offer he's valued at 13 and a half so I was actually surprised they've ended up accepting that he isn't a first choice for them which might be part of the reason he was unhappy and he wanted a new deal so he's accept they've accepted our offer and he's really really um interested in signing for us which is nice and there we have a deal agreed that the agent insisted on a minimum fee release clause so he's got 60 million pound release clause in his contract 60 grand per week no sell-on fees no yearly wage rises which is uh, particularly pleasing and to sign him I think is a big big sign and you know he's obviously going to provide a lot of competition for Oliver McBurney and Esposito up top he will probably come in as our best striker I would imagine um, and he will take the spot of either Esposito or McBurney whoever is performing worse which at the minute is Esposito he hasn't scored in God knows how long oh well he has but not properly and there we have it our first signing of the January transfer window and probably our last based on the lack of people I can find Alexander Isaac comes in five million up front seven and a half million over three years absolutely fantastic deal in my opinion uh signing a player with that sort of potential who, who can slot straight in and improve our first 11 straight away it's a fantastic bit of business to be able to do during January so he's going to come in likely won't make it for today's squad as we play um Huddersfield in the FA Cup fourth round but you'll likely see him over the coming games and hopefully get some goals yes we've hit our board expectation we've beat Huddersfield in the fourth round of the FA Cup away from home John Fleck getting the only goal in the game 78 minutes in and it was a little bit of a fortunate result they definitely didn't necessarily deserve to get beat but it happened anyway they had a goal disallowed quite late on Alexander Isaac did actually end up starting that match he was fit and he was available uh, it didn't do anything <laughs> but John Fleck did and thankfully we're through another win this time against Southampton in the Premier League Sebastiano Esposito getting the goal in the 50th minute to give us the victory a decent little performance by us Southampton never really offered anything coming forward um, Alexander Isaac got the assist and Esposito got the goal so starting a little bit of a combination up top there which is absolutely delightful to see so we're currently sitting seventh position with Manchester 
go back above above Wolves, who must have been defeated in their game against Brentford there. Um, 36 points out of 23 games. Still got that game in hand against the likes of Wolves, but a game ahead of the likes of West Ham, who were three points ahead of us in sixth position. One more game to go in January, and then that will be over. And in the final game of this January period, we get our another win against Watford away from home 2-0. Ender Stevens from left wing back getting the goal and then Keen Bryan coming on at left wing back and getting another goal in the 91st minute. So after that win, we currently sit 6th in the Premier League table. We've managed to oust West Ham, but they do have a game in hand, so likelihood is we'll end up dropping back out of that. But it's really encouraging the fact that we're sitting in a European qualification spot at this stage of the season. Only 15 games, uh, 14 games to go for us. It's absolutely fantastic stuff. It's been a good January period for us. Uh, very few defeats. Only the Chelsea game springs to mind. Uh, three Premier League wins. A draw. A one defeat, obviously. Then the two FA Cup wins as well. Absolutely fantastic little run for us. Now, looking forward to the second half of the season. Of course, we've got a lot of the bigger sides that we haven't faced yet. The likes of Arsenal. Uh, Manchester United there. Liverpool, Spurs, Man City. But... There's still a lot of winnable games there as well. And if we can keep up the sort of form that we've been performing with so far this year, you never know. Six might be an achievable object. And then getting into your Europa League will be absolutely fantastic for Sheffield United. Looking forward to the next episode. We're going to return for the West Ham and Arsenal game. Uh, two London clubs, home against West Ham, away against Arsenal. West Ham game obviously being one of the key ones there. If we're still... Uh, fighting with them for that sixth place spot could end up being the decider between which side actually gets it or not. So with the January transfer window quickly drawn to a close, the only signing that we've made that you've saw is Alexander Isaac for £12.5 million. I think it's a decent bit of business. Uh, the fact that he's already valued at 17.75 speaks to the, the value for money that we've got, if nothing else. He's got one assist and two Premier League starts. Not the greatest start for him, but he will hopefully end up coming into his own, still got plenty of potential to grow and with him and Esposito, you never know, it might end up being one of them partnerships that ends up lasting for years. Um, well that's going to be it for today's episode, there is still a couple of days of January to go but I'm not going to make any more moves and the, the likelihood of me selling anybody is pretty low. We have had no offers come in for the likes of T. Rukera who was linked with Monaco at the beginning of the window, uh, nobody's coming for anybody so that leaves me pretty happy. In terms of our club vision, uh, making the most set pieces, they still hate that, but I don't, I, I don't even know how to do that anymore. You know, I've set up my set pieces, I've tried to get us to actually uh, score off them and stuff like that. I play for set pieces as part of the tactic, doesn't matter, I'm never going to satisfy the ball with that. I will continue to try and get that removed from the club culture uh, ongoing. But everything else seems to be going pretty well, they're satisfied with my use of the youth system. Um, playing possession football they're satisfied with, which is... Compared to last year, which they were disappointed with, I think that's a pretty big deal. Um, signing players under the age of 23. Every single sign I've made has been under the age of 23 at this point. We're on courses with our wages. We're, they're pretty delighted with our... We're on course to avoid relegation for the Premier League. That isn't attempt to avoid relegation either. That is purely just avoid it, which is great stuff. Um, FA Cup 5th round we've met and we've passed the uh, League Cup 4th round as well. So the board, with a B-plus score, are pretty happy with our performance overall. But anyway, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.